Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a really interesting geometry problem from Leap Code called Separate Squares 1. This is a medium level problem that tests our ability to think about areas and continuous ranges. It sounds complicated at first, but don't worry we're going to break it down into simple logical steps. Here's the problem. We are given a list of squares. For each square, we know the coordinate of its bottom left corner and the length of its side. Our goal is to find a specific horizontal line. Let's call it a y-coordinate. This line needs to split the total area of all the squares perfectly in half. So the total area of the square parts above the line must equal the total area below the line. A key detail here is that squares might overlap, and if they do, that overlapping area counts multiple times, once for each square involved. We need to be fairly precise with our answer, within 10 to the power of negative 5. Let's look at a simple example to visualize this. Suppose we have two squares, both with a side length of 1. The first one sits on the ground at y equals 0. The second one is floating up in the air, starting at y equals 2. The total area is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. We need a line that splits this total area in half, so we want the area below the line to be exactly 1. If we draw our line at y equals 1, we capture the entire first square below it, and the entire second square is above it. That gives us an area of 1 below the line which is exactly half, so our answer is 1.0. Easy enough, right? But what if the squares overlap or the line cuts through the middle of a square? That's where it gets interesting. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the logic and solution using Python first. It's great for readability. But if you're a Java, C++, or JavaScript developer, don't worry. I've included full, ready-to-run solutions for those languages at the very end of the video, so stick around for those. So how do we solve this generally? The first approach relies on a simple observation. As we move our horizontal line upwards, the area of the squares below that line can only increase or stay the same. It never decreases. This is what we call a monotonic property. Whenever you have a monotonic problem where you're looking for a specific value, binary search is usually the answer. We can guess a y value, calculate the area below it, and if that area is too small we know we need to move our line higher. If it's too big we move lower. We repeat this until we zero in on the exact answer. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leap code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list. It's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to-do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leap code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent, which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel you're trying to improve, so this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use, core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now, while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic, now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first, and don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Alright, here is the full Python code for the binary search approach. It's quite clean. We calculate the total area first, then set up a binary search loop that calls a helper function to check our guesses. Take a quick look, and then we'll break down the specific logic of that helper function. The heart of this solution is the check function. It takes a potential y coordinate, which we call limit y. We iterate through every single square. If a square starts below our line, it contributes some area, but how much? Well, if the square is completely below the line, we take its full height. If the line cuts through it, we only take the height up to the line. The min function handles both cases elegantly in one step. We sum up these pieces and check if we've reached at least half the total area. Then we have the binary search itself. Since we are searching for a decimal value, not an integer, we don't look for an exact match. Instead, we keep shrinking our search window until the difference between our high and low bounds is tiny, specifically, smaller than 10 to the power of negative 5. If our check function returns true, it means we have enough area below, so we try to see if we can find a lower valid line by moving the high pointer down. If we don't have enough area we must move the low pointer up. Now let's talk about the second approach. 
the scanning line or sweep line method. This is often faster because it doesn't involve guessing. Instead, we scan from bottom to top. We treat the bottom and top edges of every square as events. As we move up, we process these events. Between any two events, the total width of all active squares is constant. This means the area grows linearly in that strip. We just keep adding up these rectangular strips until we pass the halfway mark for total area. Here is the code for the scanning line approach. It's a bit more mathematical, but very powerful. We create a list of events where the width changes, sort them, and then iterate through. Let's zoom in on how we process those events. First, we flatten our 2D geometry into a 1D list of changes. For every square, we have two events. At the bottom Y, the total width of our cross-section increases by the length L. At the top, which is Y plus L, the square ends. So the total width decreases by L. We add these to a list and sort them by coordinate. This lets us walk up the graph, updating the width as we go. Then comes the sweep. We maintain a variable called covered width. At each step, we look ahead to the next event's Y coordinate. The area between our current position and that next event is simply the current width times the height difference. If adding this strip pushes us over half the total area, we stop. We know the target line is somewhere inside this strip. We can calculate the exact position by taking the area we still need and dividing it by the current width. That gives us the precise height to add to our current Y. So, how do they compare? The binary search method's speed depends on how precise we want to be. It runs in order n times the log of the range divided by epsilon. The scanning line method is usually more predictable. Its speed is dominated by the sorting step, so it runs in order n log n. In practice, both are efficient enough for this problem, but the scanning line is often preferred for exactness. Both approaches use linear space to store the data. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java using the scanning line approach. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. We looked at two ways to solve this. First, binary search, where we guessed the answer and refined it. Second, the sweep line algorithm, where we processed width changes as events. The key takeaway here is that even complex 2D geometry problems can often be flattened into simpler 1D problems by sorting coordinates. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leet Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leet Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click. Maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.